Good afternoon. I will try to be uh, fast. Um, after all the very good introductions that have been made, I feel that there is not much left to say. Uh, but maybe uh, to just look at it a little bit more practically, um, for this update, uh, our governing board had ma has made our life uh, in a way easy. Uh, we only have one team to focus on for this update, that is uh, sustainability and how to make Europe the most efficient and environmentally friendly sky to fly in the world. I hope that at the end of the conference we can make a song <laughs> We're going to all together. recite it together. <laughs> Um, and obviously what this means for this update, because arguably environment has always been in the master plan, is that it will not be enough anymore to say that environment is important. We will actually have to say what does it mean to have the most efficient and environmentally friendly sky to fly in the world. How will we get there in terms of implementation? We will have to be very concrete to orient investments in that direction. And just speaking of investments, um, it will be important to see those as a relatively small contribution to a very large journey our industry is embarking on. If you put the investments in relation to sustainable aviation fuel, the introduction of the next generation of aircraft that will be greener and quieter, at the end of the day, what we need to implement with a digital European sky, we argue, is, relatively speaking, a low-hanging fruit in that trajectory. We cannot afford to fail. I like to see it a little bit as a missing link to enable this massive transformation in our sector. And I also provocatively like to say that it's a relatively modest cost um, in comparison to all those other investments, I mean, we are talking over uh, 1.2 trillion uh, euros of investments that need to be realized by the industry uh, to put us on a destination 2050. So less than 1.5 euro per passenger per flight in that time frame. Should be a no-brainer from an investment perspective, and anyone that will come to me saying it's too expensive to implement CESAR, I will just throw these slides. Now, we also argue that um, because the central team will be environment, it will not mean that we will reduce our focus on digitalization. It will probably mean that we will have to further increase our focus on digitalization automation. The discussion paper outlined five transformation levels, which we argue are those that we need to focus on more over the next period. Because if we want every flight to be optimized by default in very precise manners, we will not be able to do that without having a much more data-intensive ATM ecosystem. And we will not be able, in a context of staff shortage, to think that all of the information can be processed by the human brain, as smart and talented as they are. We will need to have stronger automation support tools. We'll have to look at new ways of how the airspace is actually managed, also with the support of automation. And it will bring us to think of an evolution of the air traffic controller roles. It's probably not the only category that will be impacted uh, as part of this journey. All of it in a relatively short time frame. We meet, need to have that not just developed, but implemented within the next 20 years. If we do that right, we will have paved the way, we will have an infrastructure that enables the future of air mobility with new entrants, with autonomous aircrafts that are going to be green uh, and allow us to continue to have uh, mobility uh, for uh, future generations. Now this update is also going to be one that will be more deployment, implementation oriented than ever. You see, we are at this crunch point. Uh, it cannot be a science fiction type master plan update. Um, and to get there, we will take stock of where we are. You see, uh, we have right now just uh, with what is relatively mature in the master plan at about 26% of implementation of the master plan, excluding the final step. We have uh, implement 
developed and completed most of the RNI work. Uh, um, we can now move to a new phase of deployment, and for that we work very hard to determine the next generation deployment priorities. We will try to have maximum 10, so that uh, it's not an endless list of priorities and everyone at the end uh, doesn't know what the priorities are anymore. And we call that strategic deployment objectives and we will have voluntary strategic deployment objectives for those that want to be early movers on CESAR outcomes. And as we do that with an emphasis on speed, uh, we will be probably having a master plan that will mark a before and after effect. Uh, it may mark the transition away from a monolithic ATC system architecture to one that is based on modern IT architecture. If we are not managing that, we heard it many times over the course of the morning sessions, we will continue having 15, 20 year innovation cycles and then we just simply miss the time frames that are ahead of us. So something there needs to happen. We also need to have the master plan that this time is really helping steer investments uh, and we cannot miss the opportunity also of the next reference period, uh, RP4, that will be coming out um, uh, after negotiation with the states. And we will have to work more closely than ever before with EASA to make sure that we have the regulations that enable those that want to deploy those new priorities, that this can be done without any reason for delay. So focus on deployment, maximum 10 strategic deployment objectives. That's the challenge. We'll also have to do that having in mind a completely different global and security context uh, for our infrastructure. Uh, you see here the data with regards to the impact of the Ukraine war on availability of airspace. You see the data on the increase of uh, cyber-related uh, attacks. Unlike in the past, where we also said that civil military coordination is important, this time we will have to define what are new security capabilities we need to develop and implement it, or cyber security capabilities in order to be able to accommodate future uh, combat systems, to have a much stronger ATM cybersecurity posture, and to protect our infrastructure. So vision will not be enough. We need to be more precise on what we need to do. We have nine months. It's a bit like a race. Many beautiful things can happen in nine months. Uh, but it is actually a short period of time with over 100 experts from across the uh, aviation value chain will be working together. And we will be federating, we hope, uh, a, a strong consensus between uh, investors and, and policy makers uh, starting now uh, up to July with, uh, I would say, a uh, nice start with an exploration of the full range of options moving into then the more difficult part, which will be uh, a phase uh, two, uh, to look at prioritization, the impact of all of this, and then probably a very exciting phase three, the final consolidation before we deliver. Andreas will deliver a proposal to the board for an update that will then go into a formal consultation phase with member states, consultation, provisional council, single sky committee, and hopefully an adoption of the new master plan at the December board next year. And in parallel, we will be working on feeding the global air navigation plan update. I would like to conclude with a quote from uh, Bertrand Picard, who was my mentor when I went back to university recently uh, to complete a kind of engineering degree for adults. Um, and I've heard a lot about uh, the importance of uh, raising the bar, courage. Um, and for him, I mean, in 90 days with his colleagues, they had to go around the globe in this uh, hot air balloon. And when I discussed César with him, he often tells me what is holding back people is not the investment capabilities, not the standards, not the regulations, uh, not all of these things we have in this person, it's the mindset. Um, so if we need to fly higher, faster and greener, my question would be, what are the ideologies we need to leave behind to be able to fly higher, faster, 
and greener. I've heard about forget about systems, forget about procedures, forget about small adaptive steps. Are those the right things we need to leave behind? The main thing for me is let's today hopefully leave this conference and I hope you will share it with me with the right mindset to make that a success. That would be a good start. Thank you.